President of the Latino Leadership Alliance, the Honorable Martin Perez. Let's welcome our leader. And when I come to a place, I always come with a friend, a powerful friend. <laughs> I met a, this gentleman many years ago, and he was uh, working as a U.S. attorney in the university. And I went to his office, probably I went to protest and to complain about something about Latinos in the state. And we develop a good friendship because it's a person that is very honest, very uh, clear. And we develop a friendship. And he started coming to, to the Latino Leadership Alliance meetings. He developed a, a friendship with us and with the organization. Uh, he come to the Alliance meetings. Uh, when the election, the, the, the last election came, the Latino Leadership Alliance didn't endorse him. And he probably was hurt. <laughs> uh, because he knows he's uh, our friend. But the Alliance uh, decided to endorse another candidate. And he respected that. And instead of abandoning us, he kept our friendship he kept coming with us, he kept respecting us, he kept working with us. And that's the type of friendship and leadership that we need in this state. <laughs> this gentleman is not just a politician, this gentleman is a leader. And a leader is a person that is willing to speak clearly, he has developed so much uh, friendship, support, not just on the Republican side, but on the uh, Democratic side and independence. So it is really a pleasure and an honor to present to you my friend, the friend of the Latino Leadership Alliance, the Honorable Chris Christ. Thank you for reading. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, I am uh, happy to be here uh, tonight once again with the Latino Leadership Alliance and with many friends in this room. Uh, I want to thank uh, first Martin for his introduction. He is right, I was hurt four years ago when you endorsed the other guy. Um, but I think the things that Martin said in his introduction are so true about how we fix our broken political system. You know, we're, we're not always going to agree all the time. We're not always going to be happy with each other all the time. But if you believe in the person on the other side of the table, if you believe in those people who I used to leave my son's Little League games for to come and meet with, just because you have a disagreement doesn't mean you abandon a friendship. And so over the last four years, that I've been governor, we built on the foundation that Martin and I and other members of the Alliance built in my seven years as U.S. Attorney. And we've done things that other governors have talked about doing but haven't done. And there's more to do. There's a lot more for us to do. But let's go through some of the things that are really important, really important things that we talked about. You know, first, it's about getting more representation from every community across New Jersey onto the most important positions in our state. And one of our first goals that I discussed with the Alliance was given the increasing importance of Rutgers 
in the lives of the Latino community, the increasing percentage of Latina students going to Rutgers University. We needed someone on the board of Rutgers to go to Rutgers. And let's remember something, everybody. Um, I made the decision to nominate Martin Perez for the Rutgers Board of Governors. Nearly two and a half years ago. In the same way we have to remember who our friends are, we have to remember who our friends are not. That's just as important. Because especially this time of year, 24 days before an election, I'm willing to bet that everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody wants to be your friend. But the fact is, for two and a half years, we had members of the state senate block Martin's nomination. Despite the best efforts of the governor's office and Republicans in the state Senate, they would not move Martine's nomination. And then when we had the opportunity to negotiate a merger of Rutgers and UMDNJ, one of the things I asked for right at the end of the negotiation was the ability to put one person on the Rutgers Board of Governors as a direct appointment without the need for advice and consent from the Senate. And the guy who now sits on the Rutgers Board of Governors as the only Latino representation on the Rutgers Board of Governors is our friend Martin Perez. And let's not forget that it wasn't good enough for the people who oppose us just to block him for two and a half years. After I appointed them, they're so f afraid of having Martin Perez on the Rutgers Board of Governors for reasons that I'll never quite understand. They actually sued me to try to prevent the seating of Martin Perez on the Rutgers Board of Governors. Now, I don't know how you define enemies, but if they're willing to sue you, to stop you from bringing diversity onto the Rutgers Board of Governors, I think that's a pretty good definition. But yet, we fought together. And the courts have supported us, and Martin is now representing all the people of New Jersey on the Rutgers Board of Governors. I've been governor with representation with, with the representatives, rather, of the Latino legal community. And I know that there was significant concern in that community to make sure that we continue to make progress regarding Latino representation in our legal community. And you know the fights that I've been having over the New Jersey Supreme Court. Thank you. confident that before the end of the year he will be confirmed and placed on the court and we will once again have Latino representation on the New Jersey Supreme Court. We're continuing to work with the Alliance to find good and qualified prosecutors for openings in the county prosecutor's jobs around the state and we've diversified the prosecutors in ways that they've not been diversified before. Um, I remember I thought in the beginning when I first became governor, that there was some kind of statute or rule that said that to be a county prosecutor, you had to be an Italian or Irish man. Um, I found out by looking into the law that that wasn't the case. And now, you know, we have our first Asian American prosecutor. We now have our first Sikh prosecutor in Bergen. The fact of the matter is that we're in the middle of a big fight, everybody. The middle of a big fight. We need to determine whether or not choice of where to educate your child and how to educate your child should be with parents, regardless of their economic status, or whether it should be with those folks who are trying to protect the jobs of others in the public school system. See, to me, when there's 200 failing schools in New Jersey, which we have 200 schools that have been judged as failing, in this race, my opponent says that's not a bad percentage. Well, let me tell you, that sounds like the words of a woman who didn't send any of her children to one of those 200 failing schools. And the fact is, we need to give opportunity and choice now that our it's like if you walk up to a pool and you see 10 children drowning in the pool. 
when you're just by yourself and you can dive in and say four or five of them. That argument says, let them all drown because it's not fair to the ones you can't save. I think any child that we save from the misery of a failed education and a miserable future because of it is an obligation that we have and a great gift that we've given to that child. I simply can't sit by and allow us to see children fail in school in the 21st century and leaving them without hope that their lives would be great. I believe that every child should be able to give them the opportunity to reach their God-given potential. That's a moral requirement. And we need to work together to make sure that that happens. We need to make sure that we continue to work on the issues that will make those children believe they have a bigger and brighter future. We need to get to work in the state legislature on things like making sure that there's tuition equality for everybody in New Jersey. It is disgraceful what's going on in Washington. Both parties deserve blame for the show they put on every day, hoping that we're not watching, hoping that they're distracting us from the ridiculousness of the idea that when you're given the responsibility of running the government, you close it. But they need to get back to work. And I'll tell you, one of the things they need to get, to get back to work on is fixing this immigration system in this country. It's a disgrace that it hasn't been fixed already. Get them back to work and get them fixed now. And balancing our budget, and reforming our tax system, and making the investments in the safety and the security of our country that they should be doing. There's lots that we need to work on. Some of which we can directly fix here in New Jersey, some of which our voices are going to be needed to influence on the national scene in Washington. But all of you know this is stuff that needs to be done. I'll conclude with this. When the Alliance voted to support me in this campaign, I can tell you that it was one of the proudest days of my time as a public servant. And it was because it's something that we worked at together. We listened to each other. We heard each other's concerns. We got to watch each other over a period of years and judge our character based on our deeds, not just our words. I know that over this time I've needed to earn your trust. But it's not a trust that's just given and given lightly. And now that I have your support and your trust, please know that I'm going to continue to work hard every day to make sure that I give you more and more reasons to be proud of the endorsement that you've made in 2013. And on 2013, I need to urge you all to do this. This is my only commercial in these remarks. There's 24 days to go to the election. If the issues I've spoken about and others that we've spoken about over time are important to you, and I see a lot of candidates in this room, and they shake your hand and say hello, don't let go of their hand until they give you an answer and a yes or no answer on the issues that are important to you. This is the moment when you're most powerful. These last 24 days, this is the moment you're most powerful. This is the time you should be grabbing each and every one of these folks aside and asking them where they stand on the issues that matter the most to you. And then everybody, regardless of how you voted in the past, Whichever party, you should make your decisions based upon what they promise you they will do and then hold them to it. Too many promises to this community have been broken over time. And you need now to make a judgment as to who will really go down there and stand up for you on the issues that are most important. You know where I stand. You've watched me do the things that I promised you I would do four years ago. And I remember a week or two after the election, we were in Jersey City. I forget what the event was, Martine, but we were in Jersey City. And it was the first time I saw Martine after the election. So Mary Pat and I were there, we were making our way across the room. And you know, Martine's the president of the organization that endorsed the other guy. 
So I don't think he knew exactly how I was going to react to him. So I made my way over to him, and he stood up and put his hand out, and I grabbed him and gave him a hug. And I whispered in his ear, now it's time for us to get back to work. You know, it's too easy to let petty problems get in the way of big issues. It's too easy for us not to work with each other. We need to work with each other. We do our job in the next 24 days, Martin won't have another uncomfortable encounter with a, with a cabinet he didn't endorse. Okay? He will have a comfortable encounter with a friend who will be looking towards the next four years and seeing what more we can accomplish together to enhance the lives of everybody in New Jersey and to put a spotlight on the enormous contributions that this community makes to our state and its growing prominence in our state. And so, over the next 24 days, I need you to hold candidates to account, and then I need you to be out there working for those candidates. Your voices will be diminished if the candidates you support don't win. Your voices will be amplified if the candidates you support know that not only will you support them with your voice, but you'll support them with your efforts over the last 24 days of this campaign to help them over the finish line. Let's be practical, everybody. Political influence comes to those who are willing to stake their reputation with a candidate or candidates they support, willing to stake their efforts and their time and their good name, and then help them to victory. Because if you don't win, you can't govern. And if you don't govern, you don't have a chance to change the state. You all are a part of the great coalition that are going to help me continue to change the state of New Jersey if we do our job in the next 24 days. So I want to thank you for your faith and confidence in me. I want to thank you for the support that you've already given me as an organization and the support I know you'll be giving me, not only just over the next 24 days, but hopefully with a good result on November 5th over the next four years to come. And let's make sure that everybody understands that we're all going to be held to account for our deeds, not just our words. And so, Let's work together and work hard to make New Jersey a better place. Let's work together and work hard to provide greater opportunity for our small business people and our children. Let's make sure that to the forces who believe that they can continue to defeat us like they thought they were going to defeat us at the Rutgers Board of Governors, that they're wrong. And they're wrong because the power that we bring when we work together and trust each other is a power that would be very, very difficult to resist. So congratulations to Martine and all of the wonderful leaders of this organization. Thank you to all of you who are here tonight to support them. The work they do is extraordinarily important to the progress of our state. And thank you for being my friend. More than anything else, more than anything else, thank you for being my friend. So back to the campaign trail. 24 days to go, not that I'm counting. 24 days to go, not that I'm counting. We are going to continue to work as hard as we can to bring our message to the people of the state. And with a good result on November 5th, We'll sleep well that night, wake up the next morning, and get back to work. Because I will tell you that no matter what else happens to me in my life, I will never have a greater honor or privilege than being the governor of the state where I was born and raised. And my parents, both my dad, who I'm fortunate enough to still have here at 80 years old, and my mom, who passed away over nine years ago, but who I know is watching, would say the same thing to me in these last 24 days. 
My dad tells me, just keep working as hard as you can. Let people get to know you, you'll be fine. And my mother would say to me, never take anything for granted. Never take anything for granted. Run through the tape. Keep going. So we're going to continue to work hard together. And I thank you so much for your support, your encouragement, and your friendship. And let's get back together again next year at the Latino Leadership Alliance Gala after a great victory this past November. Thank you all very much.